The ones I've been sharing now for months. <clears throat> First on the kingdom, and then on the glory. And I want you to look at that verse up there. Work worthy of God who calls you into his own kingdom and glory. Mm. When I saw that verse the other day, I said, wow, God is so good. I mean, he's just so way ahead of us. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we're foolish enough to think that we're ahead of God and we're waiting for him to catch up. No, it doesn't work that way. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, you find out he's been where you are yeah. long before you got there. Yeah. Right. Amen? Amen. Amen? And today the Lord would have me share a message that he gave me entitled, The Way to Glory. Amen. And I want to open with a quote from a man named Smith Wigglesworth. For those of you that don't know who Smith Wigglesworth is, he's probably uh, perhaps the most powerful man of God to live in more than the last century. There are books you know, Smith Wigglesworth, to the best of my knowledge, never wrote a book himself. Mm -mm. He was a simple man. Lived in England. He was a plumber by trade. And he was a very simple man. But filled with the power of God Amen. that the dead couldn't stay dead in his presence. Mm. Amen. He walked into funeral homes, and I think the funeral directors went scurrying because they said, oh no, he's here again. <laughs> <laughs> Literally pulled dead bodies out of coffins, and they lived for like 10 or 12 years after that. Uh, just amazing. Now, none of these miracles attributed to him were written about by him. They were all written about by witnesses. A person brought on to the altar while he's preaching, and, and he hit them. And next thing you know, the person is laying there and the pile of cancer is laying over there. There was a big blob of gray mush laying on the altar. And the, and the cancer was taken right out of this person's body. Yeah, I know these things sound outrageous. Mm -hmm. And can I tell you something? In the natural, they are. Yeah. Because these aren't natural occurrences. They are supernatural occurrences. Yeah. Listen to what Smith Wigglesworth said about the glory. He said, the way into the glory is through the flesh being torn away from the world and separated unto God. You're not going to get into the presence. That's what the glory of God is. It's his presence. Amen. We're not going to get into the presence of God if we're immersed in the world. Hmm. Amen. Amen. God sent Jesus into this earth to deliver us out of the world. Right. Mm -hmm. yes. Not yes. to deliver himself into the world. Amen. Amen. That's right. Friends, this being torn away from the world and being separated unto God is called repentance. Mm -hmm. Amen. You know, many of us think Lord, of repentance God. as this deep Sorrow for sin. Well, can I tell you something? That's one part of the definition. But you know what the real meaning of it is? To turn. Yes. Repentance means to change the direction of your life. Amen. It means to change your mind and to change your thinking. It means to change your ways. Amen. Yes. That's what repentance is. Now, this isn't a new... 20, 2019 concept. The prophets preached repentance. Listen to what Ezekiel had to say. I love Ezekiel. He's another wild guy. He he was, I think John the Baptist came out of his family, family line. Because there's another guy that wore animal skins and ate locusts. Ezekiel was a wild guy. And he says this in Ezekiel 18, 30 through 32. He says, therefore, this is God, remember now, speaking through his prophet. Therefore, I will judge each of you, O people of Israel, according to your actions, says the Sovereign Lord. Now listen. <clears throat> Repent and turn from your sins. 
Don't let them destroy you. That's right. Hallelujah. Put all your rebellion behind you. Listen, and find yourselves a new heart and a new spirit. Amen. Amen. For why should you die, O people of Israel? Now listen, I don't want you to die, says the sovereign Lord. Turn back and live. Amen. Amen. Turn back and live. Amen. Yes. So many of us are so burdened by the mistakes we made in our past when Jesus hung on Calvary's cross, yes, yes, yes. suffered the brutality that he suffered, so your sin can be separated from you. Don't take back what Jesus died to take from you. Let it go. Let the sins of your past no longer define you and no longer hinder you. Amen? Amen. It's time to repent. It's time to change our ways. It's time to change our thinking. I want you to hear what Billy Graham had to say of repentance. This is so good. I think most of what he said in his lifetime was so good. He said this of repentance. He says the Bible commands it. Yes. Wickedness demands it. Mm -hmm. Justice requires it. Christ preaches, preached it. And God expects it. He said the divine unalterable edict is still valid. And then he quoted Acts 17.30. But now he commands everyone everywhere to repent of their sins and turn to him. Amen. It's time, church, to turn your back on sin, turn your back on your past, and turn your life to God. That's true repentance. I want you to hear the Apostle Paul's conversation with the elders of the church at Ephesus. In, Apost in uh, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 20. I'm reading 16 to 21. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. It says, Paul had decided to sail on past Ephesus. For he didn't want to spend any more time in the province of Asia. He was hurrying to get to Jerusalem, if possible, in time for the feast or festival of Pentecost. But when we landed... In Miletus, he sent a message to the elders of the church at Ephesus, asking them to come and meet him. When they arrived, he declared, You know that from the day I set foot in the province of Asia until now, I have done the Lord's work humbly and with many tears. I have endured the trials that came to me from the plots of the Jews. Verse 20, I never shrank back from telling you, listen, from telling you what you needed to hear, Amen. either publicly or in your homes. Mm -hmm. Listen to this. I have had one message. Mm -hmm. Paul said I came with one message mm -hmm. for the Jews and the Greeks alike. Well, here's that message. The necessity of repenting from sin and turning to God. Amen. And having faith in our Lord Jesus. Mm. Paul said, this is what it's all about. Yes, yes. That's what Christianity is. Yes. You can't be a pagan Christian. Right. Oh, praise God. you you got to come out of the darkness and into the light. Yes. you got to leave your past behind you and enter into the newness of life. Amen. Listen, Amen. Jesus didn't live in the cave, he emerged from the cave. Amen. He didn't rise in the tomb, he came out of the tomb. And the word says that he did so to become the firstborn of many brethren. He rose into the newness of life so that we would follow him, not just read about it. He made it possible for you and for I. He defeated death hell and the grave, yes. so that we can live yes. our lives in victory. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 You know, 
Glory to I remember you. asking the Lord, but why? Lord. Why did you have this ministry named Faith and Victory Fellowship? And you know what he impressed upon me? Mm. That you can't have victory unless you have faith. That's right. Amen. That's right. Amen. So what do we teach? We teach faith. Amen. We teach kingdom. We teach grace. We teach glory. Why? So you can have victory. Amen. So you right. can live your lives victorious. 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 Yeah. Amen. 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 You're to be victors and not victims. Hallelujah. You're to be the head and no longer the tail. Amen. I told you, you don't want to live on that end of the horse. <laughs> <laughs> the head is a much better end. That's right. That's right. Amen. Paul said, this is what the church needs to hear. Yes. Yes. Isn't that what he said? Yes. He did. He said, this is what the church needs to hear. Yes. Amen. What is it? The one message that he was to deliver to everyone, everywhere. Hallelujah. And through men and women of God in pulpits, this message needs to be preached. Amen. That's right. Church, this Today, this all-important message of repentance has become somewhat lost, mm, yes. obscured in modern-day preaching. Yes. Yes. And, and I believe that it has, at least in some cases, and to some degree, been overshadowed by messages that sound better and make people feel better. Mm -hmm. But can I tell you, those, those wrong messages are just going to make people burn better. Oh, oh. That's a scary thought. Mm -hmm. Feel good messages can really be destructive. Listen, I believe in grace. I believe in mercy. I believe in faith. I believe in victory. But but not at your expense. We gotta preach these messages like that, but in context. We gotta, it's all gotta be presented in balance. Listen, I I came out of the faith movement. And some of those messages were nuts. Some of those messages were so far out of balance. Same with the grace message. I believe very much in the message of God's grace. But, but not that you can live in sin and God's got to forgive you anyway. Now God said he would. But that doesn't give you permission to rub his nose in his own word. This is, some of these messages are taken so far out of context. Amen. Christians, some Christians, some, actually believe that they can live however they want because of God's grace. Mm -hmm. They do. Wrong. Mm -hmm. This is wrong preaching and it's wrong delivering. It's wrong believing because the message was out of balance and it was received out of context. Mm -hmm. Friends, we have to remember that repentance must accompany salvation. That's right. It just has to. Amen. You see, you can't get saved and stay the way you were. That's right. Mm -hmm. Huh? Mm -hmm. Amen. There's got to be true change. Amen. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's right. Amen. Jesus said you'll know a tree by its fruit. That's right. Amen. If you look at a tree and it's got stinky fruit, <clears throat> that thing can say apricots, apricots all at once. <laughs> <laughs> but you know it's got foul fruit on it. Amen. That's right. You know a tree by its fruit. Right. Amen. Amen. And then there are those that have no fruit. Yet they try to give the appearance of fruit. Remember the story of the fig tree? Mm -hmm. The account of the fig tree. It's not a story, it's an account. Amen. Mm -hmm. Trees, fig trees, the moment that they bear leaves, bear fruit. Mm -hmm. The leaves and the figs come at the same time. Jesus is walking, he sees a tree in the distance, and it had leaves. Mm -hmm. He was hungry. He said, I'm going to go eat some of those figs. He got there, there were no figs. Mm -hmm. All there was was a tree with leaves. That's called an imposter. Mm -hmm. So what did Jesus do to the imposter? Mm -hmm. He cursed it. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it withered and died. Yes. Amen. You see, we got to be real Christians. Amen. Yes. We can't play the part, talk the part, and live up to our necks in sin. That's right. Now that's not to say that we're not going to make mistakes, that we're not going to come short. We are. 
None of us are perfect. That's why Jesus went to the cross for us. Yes, but we're supposed to be on the road to righteousness. Yes. We're supposed to be on that journey yes. to holiness. Yes. we got to be on our way. We can't stay where we were. We can't stay residents of this world and demand the fruits of the kingdom of God. Amen. That's right. That's true. That's true. You're going to eat the fruit of the kingdom you reside in. Amen. Amen. Huh? Amen. Hadn't planned on saying any of this, Good but word. Good word. so far I'm liking it. Amen. I just hope you are. Hallelujah. <laughs> Listen. This is important stuff. Praise God. <laughs> you see, salvation means to be rescued. Right? That's one of the primary parts of the definition of sozo. To be rescued. Now, you know, when I hear that word rescued, being that we live right near the ocean, you know, I think of the lifeguards at Jones Beach. You know, when you get a riptide out there, you ever tried to, you ever been in a riptide in the ocean? Mm -hmm. Wow. I mean, tough, tough, tough trying to swim against that thing. Mm -hmm. So they tell you, don't even bother. Let it just take you down the beach and then swim in. <clears throat> well, every time there's a riptide, you always get some dummy out there. Then they wind up having to go out and save the guy. Now imagine if they swam halfway out and said, eh, and went back in. <laughs> or if the guy's out there drowning and drowning and says, no, leave me alone. <laughs> Foolish. You see, to be rescued means to be taken out of the dilemma you were in Amen. and brought to safety. Amen. Amen. Huh? Amen. If you're truly saved, that means that you got to come out of what you were in and into something better. Amen. Huh? Yes. Come out of condemnation yes. and into glory. Amen. But that can't happen unless you're willing to leave there. That's right. Huh? That's right. You've got to be willing to give up the life that you once led and all the horrific things that came along with it. Listen, I know sin feels good. I used to do cocaine. That's how I what brought me to the Lord. I know it feels good, but I also know it kills you. That's right. That's right. And it causes people to commit horrific crimes. I mean, it's that feel-good substance will take you to the depths of hell that you can't even imagine. Mm. Right. Not just yeah. through the substance itself, but through the life that it causes you to live. Yes. Amen. Yes. 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 I had to be willing to leave there. Yes. Amen. Amen. Huh? Yeah. I remember that morning when my wife was leaving. She was teaching at a Christian academy. I mean, I used to call her Aunt Esther. I was a rotten guy. <laughs> I was like Fred Sanford all over again. <laughs> My wife would be going to church, and I'd be calling her Aunt Esther. We'd be on the beach, me and all my friends, we used to have these four-wheel drive trucks, and we'd go spend weekends right on the beach with trailers and stuff, and we would drink like fools. I'd be, <laughs> and it'd be my wife with a bottle on the arm, and I'd be calling her, hey, Esther. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody laughs, you know, all these laughs at our expense. Mm -hmm. Isn't that horrible? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. So, <laughs> so one morning Esther was leaving for work. <laughs> and I was, I just couldn't live that life anymore. Mm -hmm. So I said, hey Esther, no. <laughs> I said, do me a favor. Pray for me. Amen. She was like, <laughs> and then I asked him, and I remember saying this, take me to your leader. Mm. Remember this, when a kid, the space cartoons, take me to your leader. <laughs> well, she used to tell me about this pastor, about all this Christianity and all this stuff, and I knew something had to change. Amen. Wow, 
did it change? Do you have time to hear the whole story? I don't know if I'll have time to tell you this too. She takes me to her leader. Now, the most wonderful man in the world. A gentle man. The guy never drank in his life. He never smoked. I mean, it's like heaven opened up and dropped him on the earth. <laughs> so I had a hard time understanding some of these things that I was into and things that I had done. And I mean, I was just a mess. I was so high sitting at his desk. The perspiration's pouring off me. My nose is running all over the place. I mean, I was a mess. And he said to me, what do you feel? And you know what occurred to me? Do you remember how many of you, when you were kids, used silly putty to make mm -hmm. like copies of things yes, in the newspaper? Yes. Huh? Mm -hmm. yes. Some of you did. Some of you looking at me like, what's silly putty? <laughs> it was this tan stuff that came in an egg. It was cool. You'd press it on something and you'd have a copy of it. And you could roll it up and bounce it. And it was just really neat stuff. Anyway. But then what you would do is you would take that picture that you made and you'd stretch it and distort it and make funny looking things. So I said to him, I feel like silly putty. I said, I feel like good has me on one side and evil has me on the other and I'm just being stretched and pulled in between. So he said, do you believe that you could be possessed by the devil, by something evil? I said, I believe that. You know why I said that? Because when I was a kid, the nuns used to tell me, you're possessed by the devil. So I said, yeah, I believe that. So he started praying. And he had hands that were like feet. He had the biggest hands I've ever seen. And all of a sudden, this big hand came down on my head. And he starts praying for me. And then he starts praying in this language I never heard. I'm thinking, what am I doing? <laughs> Yeah. What what is this guy praying? It's like pig Latin. What is this? Yeah. <laughs> All of a sudden, I wasn't there in that room anymore. Mm. Listen to this. Suddenly, I found myself in this place that was jet black. I mean, it was so dark you you were you couldn't take a step for because you had no idea what was there. I mean, you couldn't see anything. And all of a sudden there'd be thunder. And the place would shake. And then there would be a bolt of lightning. I mean, this was a scary place. I was in the midst of this horrific storm in total and complete darkness and I got this foot on my head. And he's praying. And he's commanding things out of me. And all of a sudden, sunshine, blue skies, Birds chirping, oh, oh, yeah. and I was completely Ooh. delivered. Oh, a thousand dollars we come from there. Hallelujah. Good. Hallelujah. Like that. Thank you, Lord. It happened that quick. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Now, that's not to say that after that I didn't have a couple of skirmishes. Jesus. I did. Jesus. The enemy don't quit. Right. That's right. Hallelujah. But suddenly, the... What the Lord gave me at that time was that I had a new captain on my bridge. Oh, yes. Huh? And the orders would come where before I would be like, party! And I was out. I'd be out for days. Suddenly I was like, I mean, what are you kidding me? I mean, I'd take this stuff, throw it out, I'd flush it down the toilet. I was able to say no when no wasn't part of my vocabulary. Yeah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. And I never went back after that. Thank you. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So when I preach to you that salvation, meaning rescue, requires you to be willing to leave where you were, I'm telling you from experience. Amen. Amen. Now, my wife, for years, and I've told you this before, was trying to get me to that point. But she couldn't do it. Jesus. She'd speak it, she'd preach it, she'd... Yeah. The sticky notes. I told you, I'd go to the refrigerator for a beer, there'd be a sticky note on my six-pack. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. I was like, give me a break. I'd go to the bathroom cabinet in the morning to get the shaving cream, and there'd be a note on there. You know, every place I went, 
She used to anoint my shoes. Thank you, Jesus. She would anoint my pillow before oh, I go to bed. Hallelujah. She did everything she knew how to do. Yes. But I had to come to the place. I had to. Yes. Where I was willing to leave where I was and do what I had to do to get where God would have me go. That's called repentance. Amen. I had to be willing to change. Yes. Church, that's what today's message is all about. You want to be part of the kingdom? You want to live in the glory of God? you got to be willing to get out of where you were and pay the price to get where you got to go. And can I tell you something? The price for you is just willingness. Jesus paid the price. Amen. Hallelujah. All we got to do is be willing to change our ways. All we have to do is be willing to change our thinking. Amen. It's all about the direction that we choose to head in in this life. Yes. Amen. Are you happy, Jesus. perfectly satisfied, and feel as though you're, you're satisfying God's destiny for you in the direction you're headed in now? Or can there still be room for, for yes. a course change? Amen. Can Amen. I tell you something? I think there's always room for a course yes. change. Yes. And we've got to be willing to let him make those changes. Amen. Amen. Can I tell you something? This doesn't apply just to sinners. That's right. That's right. This has a lot to do with the church. Mm -hmm. I want you to hear this from Revelation chapter 2. I'm reading the first five verses. It says, write this letter to the angel of the church in Ephesus. This is the message from the one who holds the seven stars in his right hand. This is, that's Jesus. The one who walks among the seven gold lampstands. Listen, here's what he said. I know all the things you do. I've seen your hard work and your patient endurance. I know you don't tolerate evil people. You've examined the claims of those who say they are apostles but are not. You've discovered that they're liars. You have patiently suffered for me without quitting. So he said, listen, you've got a lot of great qualities. The next verse, but I have this complaint against you. You don't love me or each other as you did at first. Oh. You've left your first love. Yes. You don't feel about me the way you did in the beginning. Jesus, Jesus. Huh, come on, that's like kids with an infatuation for one another. Oh, I remember when I was a little kid, I'd see some girl I was so madly in love you could have shot me in the head and I wouldn't have felt it. The next day I'd say, Madeline who? <laughs> you know, this is how it yes. was. But this is not how it can be with God. Yes, Lord Jesus. We've got to be willing to change yes. the course of our lives. Yes. Amen. Change our thinking permanently yes. so that we can change our destiny yes. permanently. Hey, Are you all with me? Yeah. Amen. Everybody say, Amen. 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 Listen to what he says next. Look how far you have fallen. Jesus, Jesus. Think, remember where you once were and think about where you are now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, please understand, this message is not to bring condemnation on anybody here. It's to open our eyes to understand that this message of repentance isn't for the sinner only. Amen. We're talking about change. We're talking yes. about a message. Yes. <clears throat> repentance meaning change. Yes. Turn Amen. from the direction you're headed in. Yes. He said, look how far you've fallen. Turn back to me and do the works you did at first. Mm. Mm. Listen, if you don't repent, I'll come and remove your lampstand from its place among the churches. Mm. Friends, from these verses we can see that repentance has everything to do with changing one's ways in their mindset. Amen. Much more so than simply being sorry for sinning. Absolutely. Mm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Amen. Because many people think, I don't need to repent. I'm not a sinner anymore. No, you're right. You no longer have a sin nature. That's right. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that we don't sin. Amen. Why, why, I don't understand that, you say. All right, let me explain to you. There was a time when you had a sin nature. Mm -hmm. 
and I had a sin nature. Amen? Because, because everyone born, according to Romans, is born into sin because of the sin nature taken on by Adam and Eve. Right. So everybody after that was born with a sin nature. But when you got saved, your nature changed. That's right. Amen. And when you, before you got saved, sin was right at home in you because you had a sin nature. The nature changed, and what happens as a result is that when you do sin, it is so foreign to you. That's where the word yuck comes from. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but suddenly you say, oh, right? It, this just doesn't feel right. Right, right. You know, it's like if you were wearing a black suit and somebody shot you with ink, nobody would know. But if you were wearing a white suit and somebody shot you with ink, you'd say, oh, my goodness, look at this. When you have been delivered from your sin nature and you do something that you shouldn't have done, you know that you've done wrong. Yes. Amen? Amen? So what do you do? You change your ways. Amen. You make an effort to not make that mistake again. Amen. But as long as you're trying, you serve a God who is faithful and just to forgive you. Yes. That's the real meaning of grace. You're not taking advantage of the mercy of God. You're being blessed by the mercy of God. You're doing your part. You got on the journey, and he's helping you along the road. Amen? Amen. Listen, you can't be saved by simply praying a prayer of salvation. That's the beginning. But then you've got to submit to a new lifestyle. Amen? Amen. We can't be Christians, church-going Christians, holding on to wrong values and wrong attitudes, affected by wrong teaching and headed in the wrong direction. It's, it, we can't just get saved enough to avoid hell That's right. and hold That's on right. to the ways of the world. That's right. Amen. Amen. It's one or the other. Amen. That's right. Huh? You can't live in darkness and light at the same time. It's one or the other. That's right. And you know what the word is? Choose. Jesus. Choose. That's right. The Lord said, I said before thee this day, curses and blessings, Jesus. death and life. Isn't it sad that he had to say, choose life? Yeah. He had to tell us, yeah. choose life. Yeah. What am I here to tell you today? Choose life. Choose life. life. Amen. Choose Amen. life. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. I want you to hear these encouragements from Deuteronomy. <coughs> Deuteronomy 6, 3 through 9. Listen closely, Israel, and be careful to obey. Then all will go well with you, and you will have many children in the land flowing with milk and honey, just as the Lord, the God of your ancestors, has promised you. Listen, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. Now listen. And you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your strength. Listen, and you must commit yourselves wholeheartedly Amen. to these commands that I'm giving you today. What does that mean? God wants your whole heart. You can't leave part of your heart for this lust or that lust or this demon or that sin. Amen. You've got to sell out entirely. Amen. God, I am yours. Yes, hallelujah. My thought life is, is yours. yours. Yes. Huh? Yes. My spirit, my yes. soul yes. are yours. Yes. Yes. This was repeated in Deuteronomy 30, 2 and, two and 3. Again, in, in Deuteronomy 30 and 6. Listen, that he says that the uh, the Lord your God will change your heart yes. and the hearts, listen, of all your descendants. Amen. So that you will love him with all your heart and so, listen, so you may live. Amen. Amen. So you may live. Do you see how important it is to be sold out? God wasn't talking about so you can live and take your next breath. 
He was talking about so you can live forever in my presence. Amen. He was talking about eternal life. Yes. Again in verse 10. Listen, this word all is repeated over and over and over again. The Lord is trying to get a message across that we have to be sold out to him. Sold out. Yes. Huh? He uses the term if and if and if again and again and again. And you know what that is? That's a two-word term of condition. I will do this if you will do that. Huh? Do you remember in Deuteronomy where he listed all the blessings? But it started with if. If. And then all the curses followed if. If you don't do that, then this. And he didn't say he was going to curse you. He said that's what you were going to step into. That's right. You see, Satan is still the god of this world, small g. So curses, sickness, disease, mental illness, lack, all that stuff are the default settings of this world. That's right. If you don't choose to step out That's of right. that, right. then you choose to remain in it. Amen. How do you get out? Repent. Amen. Turn. Yes. Change your ways. Hallelujah. Change your thinking. Yes. Change your lifestyle. Yes. Be willing to leave where you were to get where he wants you Amen. to go. Amen. Yes. Friends, Repentance is about getting right, it's about living right, and it's about staying right. And this has to occur during a time like this that we're living in. It's when it's so highly unfashionable to hold fast to Christian values and, and live a Christ-like life. I heard this the other day, and this is just a symptom. There's a man named Beto O'Rourke. Where did he get a name? That's not his real name either. He just calls himself Beto. And he's he wants to be a, the Democratic candidate for president. And he stated in a recent appearance that, listen, he didn't say I may do this. He said I will do this. When I'm president, this is what I'm going to do. He's going to revoke the tax-exempt status of every church in America of every Christian college and university and of every nonprofit that does not support the LGBTQ agenda. Wow. He said, now listen, we support those things because the Bible tells us to. We, we, we didn't dream this up and say we don't like those people. No. We, it has nothing to do with the people. It has to do with the lifestyle. Amen. 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 You can love a person that's a murderer, but hate his murderous ways. That's right. and, yes. and, and listen, Jesus ate with sinners, right. tax collectors, and everybody else. He didn't despise the person, but he had an issue with the, the, the lifestyle of it. So what this man is telling us in his progressive liberalism yes. and most of the other, you know, it seems like they all went in one direction. They're all saying the same stuff. And and most of it is anti-Christian. Yes. Yes. It is. Let me ask you this. Would they would they ever tell the Muslims that they had to blatantly violate the mandates of the Quran? No. No. Never. Here we are. Back and forth. Spineless Christianity. Being tossed to and fro by every wind. I didn't make this up, it's in the Bible. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Listen, you might not like what I'm saying today, and if that's the case, I'm sorry, but it's the truth. That's right. I, I, I didn't produce the truth, and I can't make you like the truth. And you might leave here today saying, that guy's an idiot, and I'm never going back. But can I tell you something? This word might just get you into hell. Amen. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Glory. Church America's in trouble. Yes, it is. And, and the ironic thing, as much as they hate us, we're their only hope. That's right. Oh. Huh? Yeah. They're throwing rocks at their only hope. Yeah. Our politicians over the last couple of decades have driven this nation so far from God, so far from godliness. Listen, this goes back to the 60s when they took prayer out of school. Yeah. Huh? This, that's when it began. 
And, and then in, the, in 73 with, with abortion. Oh, yes. Roe versus Wade. I mean, it's just been one thing after another thing for decades now. This country has been driven by its governmental officials so far from God. And all there is left is a remnant. And that remnant is the church. Amen. Yes. Right. That remnant is America's right. only hope. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus. But church, we have to become a glorious church. Amen. Yes. Right. What does that mean? We need the glory of God. Yes. We, what good is a gun if it doesn't have bullets? Amen. Huh? We need to lock and load. And you know what that means? We need the presence of God. Yes. We need the Holy yes. Ghost in the house. Yes. We need the Holy yes. Ghost yes. in every home. Yes. In every heart. Yes. We need it preached to our kids. Yes. We got to preach the word to yes. them. How oh, I know they're not going to like it. So what? When I was a kid, I was raised watching the Little Rascals. And you know what? Their grandma used to make them drink castor oil. Yes. If they weren't feeling good, they'd see that bottle coming out. It'll be, ooh. <laughs> but that's all the mother knew or grandma knew that was going to be good for them. That's right. So she gave it to them. Amen. I'm telling you, the that's word of God right. is good for our kids. That's right. They got to be fed the Amen. word of God Amen. instead Amen. of this trash that's, that's right. on television. Oh. Hallelujah. You hear the stuff coming out of car radios, it's enough to take your breath away. Oh. Mm -hmm. I told you, I was walking the dog the other day and some kids stopped at the stop sign. Me and the dog were both astonished. <laughs> the cussing and swearing coming out of that car at like 200 watts, the windows were shaking, and every other word began with the letter F. Mm -hmm. I thought, they actually pay people to do this. Yeah. These, these people, they got faces full of tattoos and stuff, and they're worth millions of dollars, and they're driving Lamborghinis, and the rest of us are like, The devil is the god of this world. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We have to decide. Mm. Listen, it's we got to stop tiptoeing around this stuff. Right. Amen. There's got to be a clearly drawn Amen. line where we Amen. say we're on the light side Amen. and you're on the wrong side. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Notice I didn't say the right side. Mm -hmm. I said the right side. The right side. Amen. We got to draw that line and say we are children of light. Hallelujah. And no longer children of disobedience. We got to start living in repentance. That don't mean flogging yourself out in the street over your past sins. That means celebrating that you don't have past sins. God has not only forgiven you, he's forgotten the sins of your past. It's time you do the same. And get on with your destiny. Amen. You know what all this is called? Revival. Amen. This is this is the beginnings of a revival. Amen. This Amen. word is is enough to trigger revival, but Amen. revival in a church can't start until revival in your hearts starts. Amen. The, the fires of revival are ignited one heart at a time, right. one life at a time, then one home at a time, Amen. and then one church at a time, Amen. then one community at a time, Amen. and eventually one nation. Amen. You know what revive means? It means to come alive again. Amen. Vive, V-I-V-E, -E, means to live. Mm -hmm. To re, it means to come back alive. Hallelujah. Amen. To rise out of our indifference, to rise out of the compromise that has so plagued the church, to rise out of the worldly indifference. Oh, it's okay. No, it is not okay. It's time for a great awakening, church. Amen. Yes, yes, yes. It's time for the sleeping giant to rise up. Worship team, you want to head up this way? Amen. Hallelujah. It's time for us to take our rightful place. Listen, in dominion and no longer under the dominion of corrupt and perverse political figures. Amen. No longer under the oppression of satanic forces. Yes. Do you realize that's what we're battling with? Yes. Listen, right. listen to how Paul summed it up in Ephesians 6. <clears throat> he said, for we're not wrestling with flesh and blood, contending only with physical opponents, but against the despotisms, against the powers, 
against the master spirits who are the world rulers, listen, of this present darkness. Amen. Against the spirit forces of wickedness mm. in, in the heavenly supernatural sphere. Mm. Amen. Therefore, he said, put on God's complete armor yes. that you may be able, listen, that you may be able to resist and stand your ground. Hallelujah. Verse 14, he said, Stand therefore, hold your ground. Amen. Amen. Friends, we have to stand bold. Yes. I know it's not easy. People probably won't like you if you let your Christianity be known. But can I tell you something? They're not the kind of friends you want in the first place. That's right. Amen? Amen. Amen. We got to be... Do you remember what the Lord said to Joshua? Joshua was about to, to, to take on where Moses failed. He was taking the baton from Moses. He was going to take his people across the Jordan River, and they were going to take the promised land. Amen. God said to him, be strong and courageous. That's what he said to him. And he told him that more than once. And then he said, so that you can take the land that I promised you. God said, in order to take what's rightfully yours, you're going to have to be strong and courageous. Yes. It comes at a price. Yes. Courage. Yes. That's what the cowardly lion needed. Yes. Courage. Yes. Courage. <laughs> we need courage. Yes. And you can't just pin it on. you got to put it on. Yeah. Well, i got to put on the armor of God. You know, something occurred to me when I read that. And I've, Lord knows I've preached on the armor of God. But when you put on God's armor, who do you think you're going to look like? Oh. You're going to look like God. Amen. It's his armor. Right. And when the devil sees you standing in his armor, he don't know if he's messing with God That's or right. with a child That's of God right. because you're dressed just like him. You're suited up in the image of God, in the likeness of God. You're standing in the power of God. You're standing in the anointing of God when you put on his armor. Church, we got to stop pussyfooting with the devil. It's time that we lay down all worldliness. Amen? Yeah. It's time that we put on his armor. You know what that is? It's his divine yeah. traits and characteristics that make him God. Yeah. And you know what? Yeah. You can put it all on. It's yours for the taking. Hallelujah. How do we do it? Begins with repentance. Mm -hmm. It begins with change. Mm -hmm. It begins with turning to God with all your heart. With all your soul and with all your life. Yes, yes, yes. You gotta give it all to him. Mm -hmm. Stop holding back. Mm -hmm. Stop keeping parts of yourself from him. Mm -hmm. It's time that we surrender it all. Yes. Friends, Hallelujah. This, friends, is the way to glory. Yes. That's the way to glory. Yes. God will occupy what your sin no longer does. Mm -hmm. When you <coughs> kick Sin out of your life, you create a vacancy that the Spirit of God can now fill. Hallelujah. And the more you kick out of your life, the more of Him. Glory will come to God. I'm going to close Thank you, Jesus. with the same words of Smith Wigglesworth with, with which I opened. The way into the glory is through the flesh being torn away from the world and being separated unto God. Hallelujah. Friends, it all begins with a decision. And only you can make you which I right. stand with you. Right. Come on, let's give him the glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.